Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and to a very interesting video on the United Airlines Flight 328 which suffered an engine failure. We'll look into how the pilots dealt with the situation, the required checklists they had to complete, what the possible cause could have been for this incident and a few very interesting side notes. Brace yourself for this one and let's get started. Mayday, Mayday, United uh, 28, 328 Heavy, Mayday, Mayday aircraft. Uh... Okay, let's go through this incident step by step using the information we have of the video and audio footage and reports from the passengers on board that plane. Now the plane itself is a United Boeing 777-200 registered as November 772 Uniform Alpha. At 26 years of age, she isn't the youngest lady within the United fleet anymore, but keep in mind the engines of a plane very rarely are the same age as the airframe. Now that being said, the 777 with 231 passengers and 10 crew on board lined up on runway 25 with 12,000 feet in length and commenced takeoff 47 hour flight towards Honolulu, Hawaii. So let's listen into the ATC recordings, which are provided by my dear friend Victor from VAS Aviation. Please go and subscribe to his fantastic ATC YouTube channel. United 328 Heavy, sounds like departure. How would you do? Good departure, United 328 Heavy, Mahalo. So Denver Tower is handing United 328 Heavy over to departure control. That's pretty standard. Remember departure, United 328 Heavy is uh, with you out of six for flight level 230. United 328 Heavy, Denver departure, runner contact, climb and maintain top of 230. Monitor turbulence from 14 to top of 220. Okay, I understand. Thanks to the pilot rep, uh, clear to climb to flight level 230, United uh, 328 Heavy. The pilot then contacted Denver departure control and the air traffic controller informs him about possible moderate turbulence from flight level 140 to 220. The pilot thanks him for the pirate, which is a pilot report made by a pilot who flew within this area a few minutes ago. United 328 Heavy, direct Zimmer. All right, direct to uh, Zimmer, United 328 Heavy. The controller then clears them to Zimmer, which is the last point on the departure route. Now, just speaking of the last few radio calls, can you hear the calm and relaxed voices by both the pilot and the air traffic controller? This is a normal flight, like any other. Now, the reports then say approximately four minutes after departure at about 12,500 feet, the right-hand engine, better known as the number two engine, gives off a loud bang followed by vibrations and strange noises. Now, the loud bang caused the entire engine inlet to separate and large parts of the engine cowling falling to the ground. The inlet landed in somebody's front yard on 13th and Elmwood Street in Bloomfield, which is right below the flight path of the 777. Luckily, no one got hurt by the falling debris. So what could have been the cause for the engine failure? Now, if you look at the later video footage and pictures, you can see that one of the fan blades is missing. Now, remember I said that the pilots sped up to 300 knots and more to transition into a cruise climb. Now, it's likely that by the power increase, the missing fan blade sort of shared off due to material fatigue, which then caused a so-called uncontained engine event, meaning an engine failure resulting in fragments of rotating engine parts penetrating and exiting through the engine cowling. But the NTSB report will reveal what the actual cause was for the engine failure. But let's continue with the ATC transmissions. 28 uh, heavy with experience and engine failure, need a turn. Mayday, Mayday, United uh, 28. United 328 heavy, Mayday, Mayday aircraft. Uh. 328 heavy, say again, please, need all that again. Yeah, uh, United Denver uh, departure, United 328 Heavy Mayday aircraft uh, just experienced a engine failure, need to turn immediately. If you listened carefully, you could hear the fire warning bell go off in the background during the pilot's Mayday transmission. You can also hear that the pilot's voice is slightly startled by the sudden change of events. Trust me, we all would be. Yeah, 328 Heavy, left or right turn? Uh, left turn. Yeah, 328 Heavy, left turn, left heading 080. Updating 0 at Jerry, United 328 Heavy. 
Now the air traffic controller asks the pilot if he wants a left or right turn. Now the pilot reacts quickly and requests a left turn. Why is that? Now this is just my personal opinion, but I think this goes back to the pilot's training in flight school. During flight school training in twin engine aircraft, it is not recommended to make turns over the dead engine, primarily for aerodynamic reasons such as having difficulty ending the turn over the dead engine. But that's a whole video just on that question right there. Miles discretion, maintain 9,000. Okay, descent maintain 9,000, United 328 Heavy. He then offers the Mayday aircraft to descend to 9,000 feet at pilot's discretion, meaning that pilots can descend to 9,000 feet in a time and rate whenever feasible. But keep in mind, if they would have continued straight towards Zimmer, they would have gotten very close to the Rocky Mountains. United 328 Heavy, you want to straight into runway 7? At immediate, we need to run some checklists. The air traffic controller is already a step ahead and offers them runway 07, which is actually the runway they just took off from just in the other direction. More or less a 180 degree turn and then a straight in onto runway 07. But the pilots react great by telling him we need to run some checklists first. Remember, aviate, navigate, communicate. So let's take a look at the likely checklist my colleagues had to perform. Here we have the Boeing 777 non-normal fire engine left or right checklist. Now I'm sensing that they performed this checklist as you could hear the distinctive fire warning bell go off during the initial Mayday call. So the first five items in this checklist are so-called memory items, meaning they are performed by heart. So the auto throttle arm switch on the affected engine needs to be confirmed and switched to off. You don't want the auto throttle to spool up the damaged engine, do you? Then the thrust lever on the affected side needs to be confirmed and placed to idle. You've previously turned off the auto throttle. You then also want to move the lever to idle. Then the fuel control switch on the affected side confirmed and placed to cut off. By doing so, you kill the engine by fuel starvation as the fuel lines leading to the combustion chamber get closed off by the respective fuel valve. Then the engine fire switch affected side confirmed and pulled. By doing so, all hydraulic components get cut off which are powered by the engine driven gearbox and other related systems. Step five, if the fire engine message stays shown, engine fire switch affected side rotate to stop and hold for one second. By doing so, the extinguishing detergent gets released into the turbine. If after 30 seconds, the fire engine message stays shown, engine fire switch affected side rotate to the other stop and hold for one second. By doing so, the second fire extinguisher gets released into the turbine. Now, once the memory items are completed and no further engine related indications are shown on the EFIS, the engine is announced as secured. One note I have to add, who performs which action of the checklist can vary from airline to airline. Now, looking at the video footage of the engine, it doesn't look secure at all and it still looks as if it's running. Now, in my opinion, and judging by this video, the engine is off, but it's windmilling. Now, the flames coming out at the back were probably caused by leaking fuel lines, which got damaged by the shrapnel. Also, look how it's shaking due to the imbalance of the missing fan blade. Okay, let's listen further to the ATC transmissions. 28, have a go ahead. Actually, trade one able um, fuel and souls on board and intentions. We'd like to return to Denver as soon as possible here, and uh, we'll get you the souls in a minute. The classic fuel and souls on board questions and what further intentions are requested by the pilots. Now, the pilot reacts great. Denver is the closest airport with multiple long runways and appropriate emergency vehicles and passenger service, possibly allowing passengers to hop onto the next flight. But the number of souls on board really don't have the pilot's highest priority right now, which he then sort of puts off by saying, we'll get you the souls on board just in a minute. Okay, Dr. Roger, could Denver be right Do you want to left turn into the airport right now or do you want delayed vectors for uh, uh, anything else you might need? 
We're going to, yeah, we'll need to lay vectors. We need to still run a few checklists and get some landing data. Okay, I'm just going to keep you in that jet heading there. Left turns all the way around the uh, aerodrome and whatever runway you line up for and you want. Just let me know and we'll make that happen. Twenty heavy, thank you. Yet again, the air traffic controller offers them immediate left turn radar vectors for one of the three north facing runways. But the pilot again replies, I'm going to fly the aircraft first, give me some delay vectors to buy me some time, I still have some checklists to complete. But can you also hear how calm his voice suddenly got? Now, once the engine was secured and they got radar vectors keeping them in the vicinity of the airfield, it just takes out so much stress for the pilots, meaning the plane is safe, so Aviate is in control. I'm receiving radar vectors, so Navigate is in control. The only thing left, I need to communicate with ATC, and that's the easiest part. <laughs> now, what, what uh, runway are you planning for? 328 Heavy? Yeah, 328 Heavy, you can have uh, any runway you like, so just let me know. Um, keeping you wide there, if you want to go into the west runways, or I can take you up to the north and take you to the south runway, it's really your call. Closest runway would probably be runway uh, 26. Now, by this point, all the checklists must have been completed, and the air traffic controller gives the pilot the opportunity to land on any available runway. Mentioning though that the runway 26 is the closest one from their present position. So everything is back more or less to normal. The cabin crew is informed and the colleagues might even have the time to make a passenger announcement. 328, we can take a tighter turn in here. Next 328 heavy, about uh, 8 miles from grass, turn left heading 290, making at about 7,000 to establish on the local logic, clear the ILS approach, I'm with you good. I cleared the ILS 26, United uh, 328 heavy. At this point, the pilot then even lets ATC know that they are able for the final turn onto the ILS. And that call by the pilot actually shows how much capacity they had left. From that point on, it was a walk in the park. No stress, workload normal. We're ready when you are. <laughs> we'll just land with one engine inoperative. Wunderbar. <laughs> Now to 328 Heavy, Denver Tower, wind 3609, runway 26, for the land, Denver Altimeter 2966. Turn on 26, United 328 Heavy. United 328 Heavy, equipment is standing by your discrete frequency when you land and roll out. You talk to the personnel on the ground, it's 120.15. All right, 2015 uh, for United 328. Then switching over to tower control, who gives them an early landing clearance and notifies the pilot about the emergency vehicle standing by. Also giving them a discrete frequency with which the pilots then can talk with the fire brigade, etc. on ground to not disturb the main tower frequency. United 320, have you planned a full stop on the runway and uh, then the personnel will come in and check out your aircraft and then we'll get you moving from there. Okay, full stop on the runway, United 320, have you? Even telling the pilots to come to a complete stop on the runway, the ground crews will then take care from there. Fantastic. The plane safely landed, the pilot even nailed the greaser. It makes me so happy to hear how the passengers are cheering in this video. Yeah! The fire brigade then took care of the still burning engine. The plane then got towed to the parking stand and the passengers disembarked in an orderly fashion. What more could you ask for? Now, a few questions arise, which I couldn't find the answer to yet. The NTSB report will tell us much more soon, but by judging by the pictures of the damage, did the pilots also experience a hydraulic system pressure loss and had to perform the associated checklist? Was the plane overweight upon landing, meaning that the pilots also have to read the relatively long overweight landing checklist? But that's the job of the great men and women of the NTSB. But what is the takeaway from this incident? Now, this incident is a great example that with repetitive training in the simulator of such failures, the performance of the pilots significantly increases on how to deal with such a given situation. Sure, initially the workload increases as it is so out of the normal, but once the correct checklists are applied and completed, the workload comes down, you have reconfigured your plane back to a normal flight condition, yet with one engine shut down. Good training and constant practice is key here. The way the colleagues dealt with this situation was remarkable and by the book. 
Also a big compliment to the cabin crew. The comments I've read from passengers on board this flight were all very positive towards the cabin crew as they remained calm and professional. Well done girls and boys. <laughs> also ATC did a fantastic job on clearing the flight path for the Mayday aircraft keeping the transmissions to a minimum and offering their help to the crew to use any runway available at any given moment. This goes to show aviation is a team effort and not a one-man show. There is no I in team, don't forget that. Also, personal opinion on my side, this shows that we are far away from single pilot cockpits in passenger and cargo planes. We need a two-man cockpit crew full stop. One pilot flying the plane, the other dealing with the problem and completing the checklist. Only the joint effort brings the plane down safely. That's it for today. Thank you very much for your time. Please share your thoughts in the comment section below. We would be great to see what your opinions are on this flight. And here's your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check. Activate the notification bell, check. Follow my Instagram account, check. And perform a touch and go at my website, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning, especially from these positive incidents like this one. Wishing you all the best, your captain.